Those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall rise up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Well, good evening, everyone. You know what I'm going to share tonight is really part two of what I shared Sunday morning at Raymond Doncaster. If you haven't been able to connect and watch that, I would encourage you to. It's on Facebook and YouTube from Sunday morning. And this is going to be part two of it, that we shall not be moved. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm, it, I'm really, really excited about sharing God's word with you. But then someone put up on Facebook last week, um, when aren't you excited? Well, never, because every time I share the word of God, it's exciting because God confirms his word with signs following that the Holy Spirit is, is ready to move on that word. Angels hearken unto the word of God. So I, I've got more coming with me than I could possibly have against me. So I'm ready and I'm trusting that you're ready to receive his word and ready to take what we share tonight and bring it to your life so that it absolutely fuels you for your own personal prayer lives. Oh, glory to God. So, Father, thank you tonight. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the wonderful Holy Spirit. Thank you that he's here to counsel us, to help us. Oh, he's called alongside of us. And we thank you for his presence. We say welcome, Holy Spirit, to touch every single person that's joining us from tonight, from wherever in the world that they are joining us from, for, um, from wherever they're joining us from in Australia and in Melbourne and Victoria. We thank you. Oh, we praise you for your word tonight, Father. You said my word is alive and active. It's energizing, it's effective, and it's sharper than a surgeon's knife. That the word has the ability to cleanse us, to deliver us, and to cut away sickness and disease from our lives in Jesus' name. We give you all the praise and all the glory. So I hope that you've come into that certain place, you've closed the door and you're ready to hear from heaven tonight. Glory be to God. So we're going to call this, I, I gave them two titles on Sunday morning and they could pick whatever they want. It's either going to be, I shall not be moved or I shall not be shaken. Glory, hallelujah. But it's part two. And I want to share with you tonight, really put a big emphasis on our prayer. And that's really important, especially in the, well, especially always, but especially in the times in which we're living. And, you know, one of the greatest weapons that we have when we face things in our life is to pray because it, it, it brings us into fellowship with the Father. It strengthens us, as does the Word strengthen us, and, and, and we begin to hear God. We get directions to know what to do, how to work through some of the things that we may be facing in our lives. You know, when we pray, remember James 5, 16. This has just been coming up kind of day and night in my, in my spirit. It doesn't matter what I'm talking about. This keeps coming up. You know, in James 5, 16, it says the effectual fervent prayer or continued prayer of a person that knows their rights, their authority, makes tremendous power available. It Wherever they're praying into, it's making power available that the Bible says is dynamic and explosive in its working. Glory to God. And it's, read that. 
constantly go over that because let it get on the inside of you because it gives you an expectation when you're praying. The power is being made available, whether it's to a child, into the marriage, into a job, into the nation. You know power is being made available, supernatural power that can move mountains out the way. So it says that your prayer, your earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer makes tremendous power available. Another translation says this, tremendous power is released through the passionate and heartfelt prayer of godly believers. And I guess that's you and me. We're godly believers. Amen. You know, you're making prayer that releases power that will touch your family. Prayer that releases power will touch the next generation as we begin to pray for them. Prayer that releases power is touching your church. And really, really, when we start praying for our church, it brings us out from one se season and into the other. Your prayer is, is making dynamic power, explosive power available in the direction in which we're praying. And prayer really is a weapon. Hallelujah. You know, Ephesians talk to, uh, 6 talks really about that. And, and, you know, I don't know about you, but I love reading about people who pray in the Bible. You know, I, I love to see how they prayed and how they, how that it was working through their lives. And do you remember the scripture where it, when it tells us that Jesus had gone back to the Father? The disciples were going about preaching about Jesus and everywhere they went, people were being saved, being healed, being delivered. But they were drawn in by the authorities. And remember, they were warned and they were threatened threatened with death over their lives, that if they continued to preach and share about Jesus, um, and they were told that they were going to, to get killed. They were going to threaten them with death. But listen, you know, I, I'm sure I've shared this one time before, but I really want to go into this a little bit more tonight. You know, listen to their prayer, how bold they were. They prayed in Acts chapter 4. They said this, now, Lord, observe their threats. Threats were being made about their lives, about taking their lives, threats to throw them in jail, threats to beat them up. Uh, all kinds of threats were being made. And they said, Lord, observe those threats, but grant to us, your bond servant, full freedom to declare your message fearlessly while you stretch out your hand to heal, to cure, and to perform miracles and signs and wonders through the authority and through the power of the name of Jesus. In other words, they were not backing off. They wanted God to give them boldness to go out more and more, to give them full freedom to preach that word without any fear in their lives and to preach it boldly. And they prayed for that boldness and they didn't pray, God, hide us, help us, put all angels around us. No, they pray, we want boldness. We want more boldness to preach the word. And we know again, let me say it again, that when you're preaching, when you pray, church, you're releasing a power. Power's being made available when you pray. Remember the Apostle Paul, he's in chains, he's in shackles, and on top of that, he is chained to a soldier. But, say but, because I love the buts in the Bible, but, you see, he could still open his mouth. He could still open his mouth, he could still praise God, he could still call on God, and he didn't draw back from prayer because he had a soldier next to him chained to him. He didn't hold back. Glory to God. And listen, church, we can't be holding back. 
We can't let the devil distract us and stop our prayer life. Our prayer life is very important. You know, I say this lots of times. If you're not praying over your family, who is? If you're not praying over your, where you live, who is? If you're not praying over your church, who is? Well, I can tell you I am. I pray over it a lot. But we can't draw back. We can't let the devil to draw us out of prayer because prayer is vital. That power coming forth for your family is vital. That power coming forth over your marriage is vital. Glory be to God. And you know, in Philippians chapter one, it says, Paul said, all the prison guards, remember, now he's chained to, a, to a, a guard. You know, they change shifts and another guard comes in and is chained to Paul. So he's chained to a guard 24 hours a day. And he said, all the prison guards know my assignment. They all know my assignment. Why he didn't let the fear of them being chained to him what they might do to him. He didn't let that bother him. He didn't stop the shackles on his hands and the chains on his feet stop him. He, he still prayed. He still praised God. He still called on God and he didn't care because he said, wherever I am, I'm going to pray and I'm going to praise God. Glory be to God. What, a, what an attitude to have. Hallelujah. I'm going to call for people. I'm going to call for people to know Jesus as the son of God, as the son of the living God. You know, prayer is for all of us, church. You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, my wife does all the praying in our family, but that shouldn't be so. And anyway, you know, if you're a husband and you're the head of the house, your prayer should be priority over your wife, over your family every single day. But all of us should be praying. It's an assignment that we all need to be picking up on, you know, over our government, the leaders in our government, over our churches, over our, uh, over our families. And let me say it again, it's an assignment for all of us to be praying and releasing the power of God and praying for our churches. You know, it's not the pre-service, just the pre-service prayer group, or it's not the prayer request uh, team that, you know, that are praying over the uh, prayer requests coming in or maybe the the group of people that come in for corporate prayer once or twice a month it's the it's the responsibility of all of us to be praying for our church to be praying for it, to be praying for souls to be saved, for lives to be changed, for the pastor to speak boldly, to speak courageously, to be full of courage when he comes or she comes up to that podium to minister the word. And really, isn't that what God told Joshua when he was taking over the leadership? He told him to be courageous. And then he said, and be very courageous. Glory be to God. We should be praying over the mission and the vision of our churches and see it's a good thing. You know, you may be joining us from another church. You need to know the mission and the vision of your church so that you can be praying over it, that you're in agreement with your pastor. You're standing with him every time you're through the week. You're thinking of him. Father, I pray for my pastor that the spirit of the Lord is upon him, that you've anointed him to minister to us. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to help him as he counsels, help him as he puts his sermons together in Jesus' name, help him in the administration. And we begin to pray over the man or the woman of God. We're praying all the time, standing in faith that mountains will move over families in our churches, over marriages. We're praying for our government and boy, 
they need it. We're praying for the leaders in that government. We're, we're praying for the decisions that they're making because it's going to have an effect on our lives. So we need to be praying for them. We're praying for the right people in the right place making decisions. We're praying for heaven on earth every time that our government comes together at board meetings and making decisions, whether that's for the government in a state, in a city, or for the government over a nation. We want those decisions to be right decisions. We want the decisions made for our schools to open it up. We need voices of righteousness into our school system. Amen. Glory be to God. You know, and remember, this is what we've got to keep before us continually. The power is being released every time we pray. I believe that. I've got that so strong in my heart that when I pray, I say, thank you, Father. The power's been released. If I'm praying over my son, praying over my grandchildren or great-grandchildren, praying over the church, I say, Father, thank you. The power has just been released. Mighty working power. That same resurrection power that Ephesians says that raised Jesus up from death, hell, and the grave. That power has just gone forth in that area that I'm praying for in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, praying and, and power being released to draw the lost in, to see the sick healed, to see illumination come to the hearts of people in our churches. Praying every day over your church. Father, we pray for power over that altar. When people step out in that altar, that the power of God is going to save the lost, heal the sick, bring revelation to those that have lost their way in Jesus name and we're praying for the sons and daughters of Christians those that have maybe fallen away Lord that illumination and impartation will come to their hearts there'll be a quickening and a turn around in their lives in Jesus name you know church the only way that we can help our families and draw for our families when they're facing something is to pray, to pray for God's wisdom, to pray, Father, for your will to be done in the name of Jesus, that the Lord is the shepherd. Father, you're the shepherd, and I'm thanking you for your will to be done in the lives of our children, in the lives of our grandchildren, in the lives of our great-grandchildren. Oh, Father, we pray that there be an engaging in their hearts, a surrendering of their hearts to the plans and the purposes of God, that there'd be guidance in their steps each and every day, Father, that they'd step in to the plans and the purposes that you have for every one of their lives. Oh, Father, we plead the power of the blood over their hearts, over their steps. Father, that those steps will not go left. They'll not wheel right. They'll walk step by step in the plans and the purposes that you have for each one of their lives in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we have to take our stand. We all have an assignment for our families, for our church, for our nation. And then the Lord, you know, can have things in his heart that he once prayed out in the earth. And it's being open and allowing time for that to happen in your prayer time. That it's not all one-sided. That, Lord, we thank you as we pray in the spirit. We pray for your will to be done in the earth. Your will to be done where you're wanting and desiring desiring, Father, a, a, a move in a person's life. We yield this prayer time. We yield this part of our prayer time to you as we pray in the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Oh, how, how exciting is that? Glory to God. So we've got to take our stand, church, if for our homes, for our families, for jobs, for businesses. 
Oh, glory to God. We call heaven to earth and light to overpower darkness, to overpower any confusion in marriages, in homes, in our children's lives, in grandchildren's lives. Hallelujah. So we take our stand and we use our authority. We pray over our nation. We pray over our state that Victoria is going to be victorious. We're calling Father businesses to invest into this state that's going to produce jobs and works for people that are, are seeking employment in Jesus' name. We're praying, Father, for businesses from all different walks of life to be sown into Victoria. And we thank you for it, Father. We praise you for it, that you're putting it in the hearts of business people to open up things and we're praying for our unemployed to get jobs, to get work in the name of Jesus, that they're not just sitting around or waiting around or, Lord, being disappointed because they have gone after jobs that they haven't got. We're calling an abundance back into our state of businesses investing into the state that are opening doors of opportunity for our young people and for people that are looking for work right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. That's what we want. You know, we have to pray where we live, not putting up with what the enemy is doing, hating people in the streets, destroying people's homes from having children breaking in or confusing our children in schools with the wrong words coming forth, with the wrong voices around them. We need the right voices around our children in the schools, the right voices, the right connections. So we pray for that, Father, that any wrong chords coming around their life are broken from them right now. We thank you for voices of righteousness. We thank you for the right people having the right influence around their lives in the school system. And Father, we pray right now. We're praying for, for positions, for positions, for the voices of righteousness to come into our school system and to take up positions in our primary schools, in our kindergartens, in our high schools and certainly, most certainly, we need the right voices in our universities right now in Jesus' name. We thank you. We praise you. We call on you to move on the hearts, to move on the hearts. And we thank you for a moving quickly and swiftly in our nation in the name of Jesus as we bring the primary schools, as we bring the high schools and the universities university and the kindergartens before you, Father. We're calling on you for our schools and we thank you, Father, for a move of God, a thrust from heaven into the school system in Victoria in Jesus' name and for light to overpower darkness, for the light to overpower darkness, overpower the confusion of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Didn't it say when Jehoshaphat sent out his praises and they were singing the Lord is good and his mercy and do us forever. As they begin to pray and praise God, it brought confusion over, over those armies that were coming against them. Well, we want confusion over those wrong voices. We want right voices in the school system, right connections around the children. We do not want a generation following us and following our children and our grandchildren that are getting more and more confused by wrong voices in the name of Jesus. So we're praying over these areas. These are really important because if the devil can get a hold of your children, he can sway a whole generation and we don't want that. Glory to God. And, you know, we can pray when you go for a walk because some people say, well, you know, I don't pray or can't pray like like you will know you're not called to. You're called to fit it into your life. But somewhere it needs to be fitted into your life. It may be going for a walk, going for a drive where we begin to pray. Hallelujah. You know, think about the Apostle Paul. 
I've done a lot of thinking about him over the last few days. Paul was in a very bleak, dark, horrible place. He was chained, he was shackled, he was chained to a guard 24 hours a day. But, but, say but, but, he was praying and he was praising. He was writing notes. He was preaching the gospel because his body was chained, but his mouth was wide open. Glory be to God. I love that. His mouth was wide open in prayer and in praise. And I love this, you know, such a, a scripture that many have used, but it's a good one to keep going into and into. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they were thrown into jail for nothing they'd done wrong but for preaching about Jesus, for preaching the gospel and swaying people to Jesus. And they received many beatings, many blows, thrown into prison. But in verse 25, it says, but at midnight, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, the prisoners heard them and suddenly, church suddenly, they didn't allow where they were to have an effect on them. They began to pray. They began to praise God because they knew, Paul knew when he started to pray, God's power was going to show up somewhere. He knew when he began to praise God, it was going to come down on them. The presence, the power of the living God. Hallelujah. And as they prayed, what happened suddenly, Woo, suddenly an earthquake, but it wasn't a destructive earthquake. It was a, a directed earthquake by the Holy Spirit and it shook the prison and it shook the shackles off the prisoners. It shook, the, it shook so much that the doors to their jail, they, those doors in there where, where they were being held were opened, every one of them, glory to God. And it shook them that every door opened, every chain and shackle came off. Power was made available through their prayer, through their praise. And, and that's what can happen when we begin to pray, when we begin to praise God for our church. The Lord is good to our church and his mercy endures forever. Oh, Father, we uphold the leadership in our church. We uphold the ministry of helps. We uphold the praise and worship team. We we uphold the children's ministry. We uphold the connect groups. We're upholding all the different parts to this ministry, Father. And as we uphold them, we thank you, Father. We pray for wisdom. We pray for revelation. And as we begin to pray in tongues, we thank you for heaven on earth through the, through the operation that you're doing through each different part of the ministry where each part is so important, Father, to that plan that you have for that meeting on a Sunday in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we uphold the children's ministry. You said, suffer not the little ones to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. We pray over the leaders that teach them. We pray, Father, for the anointing of God, that they begin to speak by the Holy Ghost, right into the hearts of the children, that those words sown into their hearts, Father, will speak to them as they grow up through their teens, through their later years, that those words invested into them in our kids' zone will rise up in them and protect them. They'll come back to them and back to them and back to them and guard them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every teacher. We thank you for the all the prayer, all the time they give to those children that they're investing in to a generation, Father, because those children coming up are going to have an effect on their generation, a godly effect in Jesus' name. So we thank you for them. We're asking you to refresh them, strengthen them, give them new ideas of presenting the word of God to our children. And we pray that every 
child will have a hunger and a thirst after your word, that those words will go deep, deep, deep on the inside of every single one of them in Jesus' name. We have to make a decision that no matter what's going on around us, just like Paul and Silas, just like Paul when he was in prison on his own, we have to make a decision that no matter what's going on around us isn't going to infect us and it isn't going to get on the inside of us. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Psalm 16 and verse 8 that I shared on Sunday morning in Rhema Doncaster. You know, I want to close off with that tonight. You know, it says we set the Lord before us. We set the Lord before us. What is it that you want to speak into our children's church? What songs is it, Father, that you want set for Sunday to minister to the people that come in and draw them in to a praise and a worship where they're honoring you, where they're more set on you than anything else? We set the Lord before us. And in the Passion Bible, it says, I set the Lord before me. He holds my right hand. My confidence will not weaken. You know what? Paul's confidence in God never weakened in those jails, not even in the environment that he was in. He didn't let where he was get on the inside of him. He kept the Lord set before him. My confidence will not weaken for his wraparound presence comes around me. And church, I want to close with this tonight. You know, as we are praying and praising God, we can say, I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be shaken. But that mountain in front of me is going to get moved. It is going to get shaken by my prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Those mountains are not going to stop us. They're going to get moved out the way. Glory be to God. And so we hold up as we close tonight. We thank you, Father, for our churches and you pray for your church. You may be going to a church, joining us from another nation, another state. Let's hold up our churches. It's all our responsibility to pray for our churches. We pray that our church, Father, is a light in the midst of darkness, that you've placed us in communities that you're wanting to move into and move through in the name of Jesus. And we pray that every member of our churches will take up the assignment, not only to pray for those communities, but to start venturing into the communities and declaring Jesus to the people. Father, we praise you and we honor you for our churches, that you are the builder of them, but you're also the planter of them. You plant on purpose. You place them into a community on purpose, that you want the light that we're carrying to start invading yes. that community. Oh, we thank you for the thank community that we're in, in Doncaster, that we're in, in Mill Park, the communities that we can have an effect in, Father, through our online teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus all over the world. The yes. word can be moving in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Father, thank you. that you've planted our churches on purpose for such a time as this, for the light that we carry to start invading the communities around us and seeing people healed, seeing people make Jesus the Lord of their lives, being delivered out of darkness and drawn into the light, seeing marriages healed, seeing homes healed, seeing the lost saved, Father, and seeing sons and daughters that, that are a, a father that have walked walked away from the Lord right now, being turned back to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. So we bring our pastors before you. We bring the men and the women of God and the leaders that will get up on a Sunday and administer your word. We thank you, just like you said to Joshua, be bold, be courageous, be very courageous and bring forth the word of God in Jesus' name name that has all the breath of God, all the
the ability of God, Father, to save people's lives every single week in Jesus' name, to save them from hell, to save them from destruction, to save them from sickness and disease and viruses and infections and to save them from poverty and lack and shortage. We thank you for it, Father, that you are a strategic God. You've placed all your churches in places that you want to invade with light. We thank you for the light. We thank you for the light. And we thank you now for planting the right people into our school system, that you start invading the darkness that has tried to creep in there with light in Jesus' name, that the light will drive out the darkness. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. Father, as we close tonight, we speak a blessing over every person that has joined us tonight. We speak a blessing over them, that the Lord bless them, the Lord keep them, the Lord makes his face shine upon every single one of them. And Lord, that you are gracious to each one in Jesus' name. So we thank you for it. Stir up our hearts tonight. Stir up that passion in us, Father. Let us never become complacent in the name of Jesus, that we Stay on fire with a passion to take the gospel to the multitudes in Jesus' name. So we honor you, we praise you, and give you all the glory. Hallelujah. And you know what? As I'm closing, I feel prompted by the Holy Ghost. You know, you can sow and invest into this ministry because we've got a plan in front of us to build a building, to build a headquarters for our church so that we can start being even more strategic in the areas that we are in, that we can have a building that's there 24 hours a day, that we may decisions over the building because it's our building and you can send in finances to help us to get this building and furnish this building for the kingdom of God glory to God and remember when you sow into God's house God will sow into yours and remember the finances that leave your hands never leave your life but they continue to produce for your life but they also have an effect on the generation that will follow your life for the glory of God. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being at the Eagles every week. Glory, glory to God. You have a wonderful weekend. And remember, if you're in Melbourne, we have two services, one at Doncaster at 10 a.m., one at Mill Park at 5 p.m. If you can't make them, we go live stream at 10.30 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. And we'll be looking for you in one of our services. Have a wonderful weekend and remember that God loves you and he cares about every detail of your life. Mm -hmm.